Okay, I'm going to go over the internals of a nitro engine and how they work. Uh, they're actually extremely simple. The only thing I'm not going to have on this is uh, I'm not going to have the carburetor. The carburetor goes right here. Back plate covers this, but I want to be able to leave that open. Uh, this is where the exhaust header goes. And this is where your head or button goes. And that's where the glow plug but there's only really uh you have the crankshaft which is this right here there's only six major parts crankshaft connecting rod connecting pin and piston so that's three no that would be four excuse me <laughs> uh the sleeve so that would be five there's actually seven, excuse me. And then you have the bearings. As you can see, you have the, uh, let me get my tool to the point. You have your inner bearings, and you have your outer bearings, which you can actually see from right here. Okay, so we're going to quickly put this together and do basically a quick demonstration of how a nitro engine works. Uh, first thing we need to look at is inside of this engine you can see there are these little grooves right here Right here And right here And on the very back This is a TRX 3.3 on the very back you have a port an opening There's my cat I need to move him so basically you take the crankshaft this is the very beginning this one is broke the motor mounts have been broken off but you take the piston you put it in this right here is where the uh, piston connects to you always want to make sure you uh, have there's this little cutout right here Always make sure, I believe that, uh, yeah, that faces the exhaust, I'm pretty sure, if I remember correctly. So, you're going to put the crankshaft in, then you're going to take your piston rod assembly, you're going to put that in, oh, actually, no, it points that way, because uh, it has that cut out, so... It doesn't, the uh, crankshaft doesn't hit the piston. So we drop the piston rod assembly into it. And then we have to get it onto that journal. It's so small, it's actually pretty much just a pin. You need to bring it to top. And in ju just a second, I'll go over the top dead center. And then you take your sleeve. You put the, uh, you want to keep the piston at the top. Get the sleeve over the piston first. And there's a pin right here, a little metal pin. And there's a slot cut into the sleeve. Line those two up. Some uh, motors, you have to heat them up for the sleeve to come in and out, like the 2.5. But I'm not going to push it all the way down in. Well, I'll go ahead and push it down all the way in. Now, it's aligned. Uh, those ports have to be aligned with those grooves that were on the side, the front, and this port back here. This is the exhaust, so everything will work correctly. So, when it's working when it you can see right here the first port to open always at here's combustion and then the first port to open after combustion is going to be the exhaust port which is right there at the back you can see it's starting to open no other ports on the side opening or the front so you can see the exhaust port is open and then the side ports start to open. 
What's happening right now is the exhaust is, as soon as the uh, exhaust port is opened, the exhaust starts coming out of the engine at a high rate of speed. And then, as it continues around, the side ports open, and the uh, the vacuum created by uh, the exhaust leaving, uh, known as uh, scavenging, starts to suck in the new air fuel mixture that is coming up from the bottom from the crankcase. And then as it continues to go down, you have the last port to open, which is the boost port, which is at the very front here. You can see it right here. This is the boost port right here. That ensures a large amount of air fuel gets in there, but you can see how far open the exhaust port is quite a bit. And then... The first to close is the boost, then it's two side intake, and then the exhaust. Uh, the reason the exhaust is the last uh, to close is in order for these engines to continue running, there is something known as a sonic pulse. As soon as this opens, the explosion, basically the noise, the pulse of it goes out hits the end of the pipe and then returns so by the time the engine comes back up to top dead center which is right here uh no excuse me as soon as it comes up to right here that uh, around, around about right there the uh it makes sure that all of the it sort of creates a uh, a valve, an air valve, and then it continues its way up. Combustion, uh, you have compression and a glow plug, and you have a uh, air fuel mixture. And you can see that the piston comes almost all the way to the very top. I mean, there's just a small little gap, maybe about a millimeter maybe two millimeters but then you have to realize you have the head that goes down onto this so there's actually a very 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 s small area so the compression is what causes the air fuel mixture to explode and you have the methanol with a uh, nitromethane burning the nitromethane giving extra oxygen to the methanol giving you your power most of your power and then it all starts all over again it's a two stroke every time it's, it says true two stroke because you have the upstroke and then the downstroke every time it comes up it fires four strokes I'm not gonna get into that that's a completely different engine uh, but you can see there are very few moving parts with these engines. You just have the crankshaft spinning. You have the connecting rod doing its job like that. And then you simply have the piston going up and down. And then you have the uh, connecting rod pin that is what connects the piston and the connecting rod together. And that's it, but you need to make sure, they have to, the people who make these have to make sure that uh, all of these are done correctly. Now one thing I've talked about in other videos is when you are, after you are done running it, you want to bring your piston to bottom dead center. This right here is what I mean by bottom dead center. The exhaust port fully open. Because you can actually see the exhaust port is fully open. And you may not be able to see it, but I can see mm -hmm. that the exhaust port is fully open. The side ports aren't fully open. You can port those and make them a little bigger. 
like this one over here is actually open a little more than this one then of course you have the boost port at the very front but that is essentially how a nitro engine the internals work to create your power it's very simple and of course you have in the the crankshaft is hollow right here the air fuel the air is coming in you're gonna have a carburetor in this area it's going to come in through here grab some fuel from the carburetor go down and then the fuel is going to sit right here there's a hole right here and as you can see that hole goes to right here and then when you hear about a knife edge connecting rod let me take this apart real quick and you can see why they call it a knife edge connecting rod the first part is getting the sleeve out Is there a pause? Press pause. Okay, uh, a lot of people say that you need to, uh, to take it apart. A lot of people may say that you need to heat it up. But one thing you can do is take a zip tie. A hefty one. Put it in here through the exhaust port. And spin the motor over. And I can actually see the... Uh, but simply you take this and you're going to want to use a rag but I really don't care about this crankshaft spin the engine and you can see right there I'll even uh, push it back down in watch it come out comes right out and this is one thing a lot of people have problems with is how the hell do I get the sleeve out so I can rebuild my motor. So now I can grab the sleeve. Sleeve comes out. Put the pin to top dead center. You have a groove in here to make sure that, that, that the connecting rod always stays at the right spot. Pull it off this little journal. There's your piston. Push the front out. There you go. That's how they're done, and that's how the inside works. So, and looking at this, you can see, here's the exhaust port, first to open, side ports, boost port. So that's how they all work. Uh, this is just a, a three port intake, one port exhaust, so three port design. Racing engines like uh, Navarosi LRP, uh, they have uh, seven ports for intake. Uh, you get a lot more power, a lot of, uh, of course, the more uh, fuel air you get in, the bigger an explosion you're going to have, more power. So, that's it with this video. Uh, last thing I'm going to go over, again, ABC construction, aluminum piston, brass sleeve, chrome plated on the inside so that's what ABC construction is uh, some uh, motors like OS they have a bimetallic uh, sleeve because these expand and contract and the one thing that I always talk about when uh, you have it at bottom dead center when you're done running it you want to have it down at bottom dead center because this sleeve is going to contract when it's cooling down if you have this piston up at top dead center, uh, the the brass isn't going to be able. The brass is going to contract more than the aluminum. The aluminum is going to basically get in the way of the contraction of the brass. So you're going to lose compression, and over time, you're going to have to replace this and this. When you get an engine rebuild kit, the only parts you get are this right here the little pin that you can possibly see right 
right there. Yeah, right there. And you get the pin itself that's hollow that holds the connecting rod onto the piston. You don't get a new connecting rod. Just use your old one. And when I, I'm talking about knife edge, you can see how it's sort of been sharpened on both sides. If it's blunt, uh, it's going to create a lot of turbulence inside the uh, crankcase. But knife edge is going to cut through the air fuel mixture when it's coming up and down and going side to side. So, those are just some facts, some things to think about. And... Like usual, until next time, hope you like the video, comment, subscribe, uh, give me a like, until next time, peace.